But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about people that already have come out of the closet in their private lives and who are well known as gay or lesbian people amongst their friends, their acquaintances, their family, and so forth, but who then lie to the public and say that they're heterosexual. Who benefits from the process of outing? Who really benefits from this? Does the gay and lesbian community benefit? The, does the straight community benefit from outing? Who um, benefits? Well, that's kind of a surprising question coming to me as <laughs> one who has said that, that, you know, I see the pros and cons of the issue and that all told, my organization per se does not choose to, uh, outing as a tactic, although we think that others within the confines that Gabriel has suggested um, should have that right. I do see a, a kind of uh, silver lining in the cloud, which is that um, to the extent that, that outing is, is practiced by a large group like say the tabloids are now picking up on it or have been for some time that it desensitizes people to the shock value of being homosexual that you know if if all the stars in Hollywood plus half your neighbors are, are gay and you know you've been reading this on the front page it begins to get old news it gets boring and I mean sometimes we joke at GLAAD that our mission will be fulfilled when putting a gay character on a sitcom makes you bored, makes you fall asleep. I mean, homosexuality is a fact of life that in itself should not be all that shocking. Homophobia is shocking, um, but homosexuality is commonplace. And if outing, you know, reaches its ultimate goal of totally um, deconstructing the stigma around homosexuality, then it then that will be a positive outcome. Do you think that's possible, Jackie? Do you think that it's possible with outing that you can actually affect a homophobic society or the way they view homosexuals? I think to a degree. I think any exposure um, has a benefit. I'm not sure that the means justifies the ends. I'm not sure that the damage that um, can be done and has been done, and whether it's just a personal damage to that one person who, like um, James Revinson, who was emotionally traumatized. He's like, but wait a minute, I've already gone through this and now you're like creating the situation for me that's totally unjustified. In that respect, I don't think it's justified. No. You asked earlier who benefits from it. First and foremost are the people who write, you know, the magazines or, or the TV shows that are going to advertise a segment of outing or are going to be printing essays on outing or something. It's got, you know, Gabriel says it's the largest seller. To follow suit with that kind of uh, We're not attitude. talking about going after people. We're simply talking about treating homosexuality the same as, as heterosexuality and but when, reporters for your paper have gone after people Jodie Foster is a prime example of that and this was even before the silence of the lamb thing became full-fledged as it is now that I, I'm just sitting here and I'm remembering something that happened to me in college where I tried to start an underground newsletter in the Appalachian Mountains and it exploded in my face and people's presumption of my homosexuality, of my being a lesbian, um, ended up with me getting phone calls in the middle of the night from the football team offering to help me make up my mind, from rednecks who had guns in their rooms because they would go hunting on the weekend, and I being one of maybe less than 200 black kids on the campus already was dealing with inbuilt fear. Um, I think that people have a right to choose when and in what communities they come out. I don't agree with what the mainstream media does with people's personal lives either, and I think that's something that hasn't been discussed yet. I don't think what they do is right. I'm a journalist as well. And well, that's why I'm saying that. Right, and the being committed to that. Open. And then you're consistent. If you say that I don't, what people I, absolutely. do every day in the press I mean, is I mean, wrong, right. then this is wrong too. But the fact of the matter is that they do it every right, day. But they're not going to stop doing it. But Gabriel, There's my nothing point, we though, can do to stop them. So we're just saying let's end the hypocrisy. Point, and point, wait, I want you to make your point because then I want to go take some okay. calls. So make it quickly. My, I my point, up. though, is that I don't. I don't believe that two wrongs make a right. I don't believe that exposing the fact that Anita Baker, as an example, who had a miscarriage a couple of years ago, who was then traumatized by people coming up to her in the supermarket and commenting on it, I don't believe that the media had that right to print that information. That was up to her and her press agents and her people to decide that that information should be out. It's the same thing that Revinson says. My commitment is apparent and obvious to those that I'm choosing to make it obvious to. And I don't think that anyone has a right to decide how far out of the closet or if the person's out of the closet or they're not out enough for my needs or purposes. Um, 
I don't believe that any writer or reporter has a right to make that decision. Okay.